Death Troopers, guys, it looks like they can run forever and muskets. Today's episode of Rip My Drip is going to be a enjoyable one. Thanks for tuning in. Let's dive on in. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing another Rip My Drip where I rate your guys' gear and uh, well, to be honest, it gives me uh, the, the most unsevere level of PTSD possible. Woo, that's good stuff. I actually love doing these videos because it's really fun. I think on the last one, someone was like, they're talking some trash or like, Admin only does these videos because it's hot outside. And you're absolutely right. Oh, that's hot. It was hot outside, but now it's getting nicer outside and I'm still gonna do it. So without further ado, let's dive on in and rip some drip. Up first, I have Tango Alpha 1999. He says he's in Don Bass. All right, so this kid goes hard because this kid goes hard for a reason I think is because he's actually probably gonna die in this kid. <laughs> that sounds really bad. No, so we have a Ukrainian fighter here. Uh, this is a little concerning to know that like I potentially could lose some of the following if things go wrong, if you make a misstep somewhere out there. This one kind of keeps me up at night. It's really cool to see. It's really cool to see there are actually guys using their kit out there in the world. Um, well, let me rephrase. <laughs> Let me rephrase, all right? That sounds kind of bad. I am not happy due to the nature of war and that there is fighting going on that you have to be using that kit, but it is crazy to see that there are the guys out there that when the time comes, they have to use that gear. At first I was like, is this just like, a, like an Ukrainian airsoft LARPer? That could be a possibility, but looking at the gas station, I checked out his profile. He definitely is a Ukrainian fighter. So um, very interesting, especially once we get further down the video when we start getting, getting into the Russian LARP. This one's pretty good. I like this one. It's a uh, practical. The night vision camo goes pretty hard along with the kit. I hope you stay safe, man. Stay safe. Next up, we have Misty Mountain Supply. Looking like a snack oh. with uh, another night vision camo and he's got an X95 Tavor. The thing is, is that he's up in Canada, so he gets <laughs> negative points for being a Canadian. I'm sorry, my Canuck friends. It's um. It's not a good life, but the drip so goes hard. I forget the name of the hat, but it's like the Afghani like hat and he's smoking a nice little pipe tobacco, which uh, if you've never done pipe tobacco, it's actually quite cathartic. All right, next up we have Kalosh Bastard from the PNW. You know what I'm gonna say? All right, you got some LBs you need to shed. I'm happy you're out there getting after it training when it looks like it's raining uh you're in the pnw so it's always fun to get outdoors up there and you got a nice little ak kit with the chai com rig and you got some alice gear good setup overall but your most important piece of kit is going to be that meat mech suit okay on the interior have your uh, exoskeleton interior skeleton design with the meat mech suit armor on the outside all right running up to your supercomputer in the brain okay it's a free travis haley impersonation you're welcome he's got an ak peasant's hat I like that. We like AK peasants here. It's a vibe. Way to get after it, son. Do your work. Next up, we have <laughs> Florida Boy Actual with a rather American kit. Well, this kit is uh, very patriotic. There is no one questioning where your loyalty lies. I like this kit a lot. It looks... Imagine being in Florida, right? And the Chinamen start falling from the sky. They have begun to invade Florida. Terrible idea because of all the swamp puppies. But nonetheless, you... you yes, you! I am me. Run out there as a true patriot and you start fighting them. They would be totally aghast. They'd have no idea what hit them. 10 out of 10. Next up, cyclic.mac. There's a few of you guys in the picture. I'm gonna assume it's the one that looks the most present and uh, kitted up in the photo. Looks like you got some uh, webbing on, doing some training for the army. The look in your eyes, you have this look of, was the VA benefits worth it? Looks like you just got a standard 14.5 M4 with an ACOG and a little PEC device. Very nice, very nice. Hope you're staying safe. Hope the training was fun. Hope you had a good time. You are a taxpayer funded kit. I like it. Boom, all right. Now we got something good to work with. Finally, some good Food. We have P15 dot full metal. He's got the Mogadishu kit. He's got the Black Hawk down look. Now here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. <sighs> I like this kit a lot. All right. So whenever I see it pop up on my feed, chances are it's gonna it's gonna get a little it's gonna get a little screen time. No exceptions to the rule. Now he's got the good old Car 15. The woods look like you are in the UK, like you're a British air softer, which is all good. It's all gravy. I love my airsofters. The only criticism I have on the rifle is I'm not sure if I like that optic. I can't 
seem to peg what that optic is, if it's an off-brand optic or not. But nonetheless, kit goes hard. I respect the retro drip. Next up, we have Vosge Toth Mil, Mil Simmer. All right, here's the thing. If this is an airsoft kit, I don't care. If this is a real kit, it looks like it could be more, more so on the side of real kit. Oh, this is definitely an airsoft kit. He's got the mesh mask. So the thing about leaf suits is that they scare me. Leaf suits absolutely scare me. I don't know why. I can't comprehend it. Maybe it's like pattern-seeking brain new of like, like monkey men that used to eat us, but leaf suits are scary. So leaf suits are a vibe. Let's see what I don't like about your kit. From what I'm seeing at a quick glance, and for doing a speed run of your kit, the knee pads. I get it, your knees hurt, and I'll always say that knee pads are great to use, but they never look cool. Next up we have Nonagon Strategic. Nonagon, is that how you say your name? Rocking a nice little split rig. He looks British, right? He's got the Union Jack. Bit of a British wanker, is we? That split rig looks really good, man. That's a very much of a vibe of a of a kit, actually. You got the old school, they are a vibe. You get plus two balaclava points, minus four recognition, plus five identity theft. I'm just making up stats for you. You're welcome. All right, next up we have It's Thorpey with the Russian kit. Now, I'm not sure. This is the duality man I'm talking about, okay? So we have the actual Ukrainian fighter, and then we start getting like the Russian LARPer. I don't think there's any actual Russians that submitted their kit. If there are, could you imagine like being on a conflict of both sides and you're watching the same YouTuber and you're trying to kill each other? Crazy. I was crazy once. God, it couldn't be me. But if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is the camo from Red Dawn that the Russians had, which was a weird like one-off. I could be totally wrong, but it's like a weird one-off camo that they had to design because they couldn't get actual Russian camo due to the, it being like the Cold War era. You know what I mean? If that's the case, this is very cool. It's part of like movie lore and part of like Red Dawn lore. And it's a great looking kit. It looks scary. That's a scary looking Spetsnaz. That's what I imagine falls from the skies and I have to run with my other high school buddies up into the mountains to fend off, uh, you know, the Russians. I like when good kit comes together, especially when you're doing force on force stuff. It looks so good. All right, next up we have Tack Daddy 28. Looking a little thick, hit the gym, do some cardio. I know how it goes, trust me. The interesting thing is that you are in South Africa from what I can tell. And being in South Africa, I don't know how that goes because I've never been. But from what I've seen, it looks terrifying. So I hope you are staying very safe. I hope you're well armed and well trained. From the outside looking in, it looks pretty gnarly. I saw that one bank robber or the bank robbery heist where they try to break into the armored truck and the guy starts driving around. That one was pretty gnarly. If I were doing security in South Africa, I'd be like, give me a freaking Galil or give me an FAL. Give me something, a vector would be pretty sick. But give me a rifle. I'm not going out there without a rifle. District 9, Aubrey. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Next up, Devil Dog Reenactment. This is good stuff. Good stuff. And go annoying Southeast Asia. 1968. Elements of 1st Platoon crossed over into the Quezon Valley taking heavy fire from NVA soldiers. My Jocko impersonation, you're welcome. The Vietnam drip. I really can't break down, I'm, I'm gonna try. The Vietnam War was a war that probably didn't need to happen, if we're all being honest. Okay, Gulf of Tonkin and all that. You know, interest in Southeast Asia, military industrial complex, Eisenhower warned of us all this. So if we wanna get tinfoil hat conspiracy, I'm not saying that the loss of life is for waste because stopping communism is based. But did we, as American values, really need Anyway, <laughs> that guy's a little too deep. Uh, the thing I'm trying to say is the Vietnam War is probably one of the most aesthetically cool looking wars that we'll probably ever have. If you look at the gear, if you look at the equipment, like the military tanks and helicopters, and then the music, there's a perfect trifecta of aesthetics and vibes that come together to make one of the most cool looking conflicts ever. I mean, look at any Vietnam War movie. The GIs in that movie always look freaking awesome when they're all kitted up to the nines. I mean, just 20 years ago, they were using M1 Garands and now all of a sudden they have M16s. So there was a quantum leap in weapons tech and it's really, really cool. So all that to be said, Kit goes hard and I love seeing Vietnam reenactors out there in the wild. Let me read you the caption with my Jocko voice yet again. The men of Kilo Company, 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines, just completed Operation Allen Brook. This was a massive success. Thank you. You stepped on punji sticks in the jungle? Good. It's medical training for your boys. <laughs> <laughs>
Up next, we have Wilson.takes.photos. First off, I like the introduction of technology to one of the Rip My Drip, Rate My Kit video. We always, I say Rate My Kit, but we like to call it, Colt and I call it Rip My Drip because it sounds funnier, but for the search engine optimization, we usually say Rate My nobody cares i like the integration of technology for this it's exciting it's the first one we've actually seen because technology i think is going to play a huge part especially aerial drones in a upcoming conflict we already see it happening in the war in ukraine so my criticism is he's got a pcc style carbine that takes glock mags but i'm seeing two ar-15 mags on his plate carrier what's going on with that wilson takes dot photos he's like to carry an extra weight for no reason why don't you have more glock mags on your kit maybe you have like a another rifle you're using i don't know doesn't make much sense i like the texture for the photos okay i respect that i like this idea it's like a little ghost wildlands recon style vibe that's the right name of the game right <laughs> Tom Clancy here. It's a nice beard, by the way. I don't think I can grow a beard like that. I think, uh, I'm gonna stick to the mustache, right? All right, next up, we have Robertos.airsoft. Another dot, man. You poor dot fellas. All right, so looks like we've got a Flectarn kit with an MG42. This looks like a fun airsoft loadout. This looks like you're ready to have a good time slinging BBs with the boys. I bet you wish it was a real MG42. <laughs> Because I wish I had a real MG42, but I don't. I think we all need a real MG42. Are you okay? Uh, no criticism. Uh, if I were you, I know it's an airsoft kit, but if you ever want to take your machine gunning kit to the next level, you may want to add some more stuff on there. Get a little more texture going. Look like a true machine gewehr soldier to fit into the German vibe. The MG3 German vibe, not the World War II MG42 German vibe. I mean, that's a little more risque. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Sippin' underscore orange juice. He says he's in Oman because he's rocking the Omani DPM. Looks good, dude. I love that Omani DPM. He's got the Americana Pipe Dream special. I'm sure it's where you got it from because that's where I got my stuff from. Both my chest rig made by Hub City Outdoors collaborating with Americana Pipe Dream and the Omani Pipe Dream. That's what we would say. It's like some really niche freaking camo. I don't think Americana Pipe Dream has any in stock. You know what they do have? A bunch of other excellent stuff because they are the sponsor of this episode, guys. Big thank you to Americana Pipe Dream for sponsoring this episode. Wow, what a segue. He used the gear, he used the kit to segue to consumerism. Emotional? Damn it! Nah, I'm just kidding, of course. But no, big thank you to Americana Pipe Dream. They have a bunch of cool stuff always fluctuating into the website. I always see on their social media. Go check it out. But here's the thing. I love them very much and they often probably get mad at me because there is like a weird overlap of when they get stuff in and then it sells out. So by the time I get, I tell you guys, it may be gone. So you got to keep that in mind. So you want to stay up to date and be checking that website i know they got like probably a newsletter and email stuff but go check them out keep them close to the bell if you are one of those mill serve enjoyers like myself Jim, we also have to thank sdi get accredited gunsmith training and take your education to the next level i failed algebra 2 in high school but if it was about how firearms work i probably would have passed the class now a good thing about sdi is that it gives you creds why are creds important well if you're going to an employer they're going to want to know that you have some sort of credentials or you can sit through a class and bear the learning process because it means you're a decent enough employee to do so in the long haul you gotta be a good vibe too so go check out sdi links down below click on it get an education if that is something that you feel called to and maybe one day you can help me out with my future projects that'd actually be pretty helpful because i have a lot of weird stuff i want to do all right so this kit comes from a follower slash person i follow on instagram he asked me not to tag him which is refreshing in the clout age but i would consider this gentleman a death trooper of the civilian world i believe he has prior military service but the man can bench for and he loves to run belt fed machine guns so we have to give a, a quick shout out to my guy but who will remain unnamed but this kit is freaking awesome as you can see it what we got going on so he's humping around an mg42 all belted up with what looks like 308 running the dual tube nods with the cry airframe got was probably when i asked him i think he said he ran 700 to 800 rounds of 308 on his person attached to his kit nothing takes up space in my mind lives rent free than a well put together belt fed kit especially when a mofo can run it with a 762 by 51 round and that lives rent free because that is firepower baby that is fear that puts the fear of god into the lizard overlords a bunch of civilians running around with belt fed machine guns nothing is more beautiful nothing is more sacred 
God, do I love this country. Oh, this is a good one. This one comes from Yogoi Soltello. He says he's in the Republic of Chad because he is a Chad. You know, I do not want to come across this guy. If there was a platoon of these guys trying to kill me, I would consider myself a dead man. He's got what looks like a G3 or a PTR-91 pattern battle rifle with a LPVO of sorts, kitted up with armor and spare mags. One, two, three, four spare mags from what I can see. One of the guns, so he's got five mags. It's only 100 rounds of 7.62 by 51. And the dude's in great shape. He has got the right amount of muscle mass and he is lean and he looks like he could both run forever and lift a lot of weight. Those guys are scary. You do not want to come across those guys out in the wild. So gotta give a shout out to that. I like that kid a lot. I would choose you for my dodgeball team. All right, moving on. Wow, well, I would have said it, Gwai. This guy can really work the YouTubes. He can really do it. Next up, we have Wasteland Armorer. I think he was going for some uh, Fallout vibes because I think is, I think that's a veteran. Well, after a certain point or before a certain point, my Milserp rifle knowledge, especially of European countries, really goes bad, okay? I want to say that's a veterly. Let me Google it real quick. Is it something else? I think I'm wrong. I don't think that's a veterly. I'm sorry, guys. But nonetheless, I think he's going out for some Fallout vibes. Kit looks good. There's a whole lot going on. The camo, the gear, the helmet, the wasteland armor. I know what you're trying to get at, okay? I, what I want you to do also, Hit the gym, okay? Do a little, do a little working out. It'll be good for you for fighting in the wasteland, looking out for death claws. But I respect the drip because it is unique. You haunt the nightmares of guys that have all the Gucci kit because you are the guy with the freaking long Tuscan Raider rifle sitting out there in the wasteland, waiting for the loot drop to come near. You with your kit, your kit that isn't that expensive, but because you are a master of your craft, you will get that next level loot drop. Moving on, this one's interesting. I'm gonna roast them. <laughs> Dovermanheimer, they're the Hebrews. All right, so this kit, when I saw, I was like, what's going on here? What is this? But the war in Israel, there's another gaza of war. The Middle East is always flaring up and this one's no exception. So we have some of what looks like some fellas, some reservists of sorts is my guess. And they're all kitted up to the nines in their Hebrew kit. I recognize some Agilite gear. I'll be honest, gentlemen, you're on the heavy side as it is right now. You know this, I know this. I'm not gonna make fun of you for it because I know that you need to fix it. But the thing is, you are actually gonna be expected to fight. So <laughs> it's interesting to see how it's gonna play out for you guys. I hope you stay safe. I hope, uh, hope it all works out for you guys. The kit is very interesting to see that IDF kit, you know, guys rocking gear around the world. So it is cool to see that. It is yet another crazy thing to see how widespread uh, of a following the channel has aggregated. You know, guys all the way from Ukraine to Asia to, you know, Israel. I remember some IDF guys were rocking some administrative results merch. So it is cool to see in that sense. Comment section is probably popping off about this one. <laughs> <laughs> As all things do on the internet. It's gonna be spicy in there when it comes to the Hebrews. All right, enough of this Hebrew nonsense. I will hear no more of this Hebrew nonsense. Moving on. I do love the carry handle rifles though. Agent Espo. All right, let's break this down. There's a lot going on here. To the uh, untrained eye, you may just think, oh, heat rig, suit, ski mask, retro carry handle gun. And yes, you would be right. But to the nuanced eye, we're gonna break it down a little bit more. So what we have, looking at his gun, it looks like we got ourselves a nice little car 15 and he has an under underslung Picatinny rail. And we have a nice canteen sling on there for a good retro vibe. We've got the government profile barrel, A1 style upper. Okay, now we move down to the suit. The suit's a big deal. I believe Val Kilmer's suit was gray, a nice light gray, and this is what we got here. So it looks good. Balaclava, you know, you got to hide the identity if you're going to be robbing banks. And then we have, of course, I believe it's probably going to be a commando store heat rig, which um, the commando store did a great job on that heat rig, if that's the case. So Monkey Brain sees Michael Mann heat and really likes, really enjoys. So this one, Agent Espo, it's a major smash. Smash or pass. You probably are wondering, how does the rating system work here? I don't know. I'm just here to roast your guys' kid a little bit. Moving on. Hazel.airsoft from Kessel, Germany. Okay, okay. This kit goes pretty hard. Here's my rule, okay? And you don't have to follow it because you're, you're probably a grown man. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to haze you on your stock choice for your car 15. I like my Germans. I met some nice Germans when I was in Finland at Finnish Brutality, and I'm a big fan of the, the Germans over there, okay? Rescue Randy, get off me! Get off me, man! Ah! When you pursue the path of the car 15, the Blood Diamond style car 15, all right, you have to get yourself the actual car 15 stock. You can't really do 
an M4 stock. This is not the commandment, okay? This is just admin's preferences. And if, if you pop up in front of admin, admin is bullying you, as he is right now. So I'm bullying you over your stock. And yes, I refer to myself in the third person. I'll hate myself later for it. Now we're gonna move on to your optic, okay? So the optic looks like a knockoff variant of an aimpoint pro or an aimpoint comp m4 which is totally understandable because you know if you're playing airsoft why would you need to drop the cash on a real aimpoint i am an exception to the rule because my aimpoint is on my blood diamond car 15 i have an aimpoint pro up there and a real surefire 660 on a airsoft gun but that's because i am a professional larper now if you do not have the means totally get it but i would encourage you and I can kind of see why. And it looks like there's some sort of uh, weird setup on the bottom of your optic on the back end of it that prohibits it from getting fully flush to that top rail, which is a bummer because you want to get that optic as low to the top rail as possible because it is already so much height over bore. Moving down, it looks like you have the XM177 flash hider on there. No, no shade there. You can always replace it and get something a little bit more lore accurate, either a suppressor or the weird non-cut uh, muzzle device. Kit looks pretty cool, so you got some sort of split rig and the camo looks freaking awesome. Well done, Hazel.Airsoft. Moving on. <laughs> I did not plan this back-to-back -back car 15 LARP, so I have to roast you guys. Okay, Suntastic.7. We're going to start with what's good, Suntastic. Your balaclava. I love the Arcturix Leaf balaclava. And you got some Alice kit. It's going to be a similar roast to, uh, what's his face? Hazel Airsoft, okay? Similar thing, you have an optic mount a little bit too... Oh my god. Is that a detachable carry handle? You sicken me. But you have the right uh, stock on your gun. So um, never have anything right around here. So you have the right CAR-15 stock on there. You have a detachable carry handle, which um, I, I, I hate, but I don't hate, you know what I mean? If you're gonna go for the, the, the Blood Diamond look, I demand either an A1 or an A2, okay? Rules are rules. You have a knockoff looking Aimpoint Pro with a higher mount. Guys, you can get a primary arms mount or a low profile mount. I believe the millimeters for the Aimpoint Comp M4 or the Aimpoint Pro is 30 millimeters. So get a low profile mount. All right, you know what? Better, it's better to show you guys than just talk about it. Listen, my airsoft guys, okay? I know there's not a lot of the right parts out there in the airsoft world, so you may want to use some real steel parts. So this is going to be a umbrella arms airsoft gun, okay? This isn't what the video is about, but I'm referencing right here. I have my aim point, my actual aim point optic because I'm Gucci. And then we have a primary arms, I believe, mount. The 30 millimeter mount. Look how low and flush it is to the rail. That's what you want. None of this to higher optic on a high carry handle, all right? Also, the flex is my A2 carry handle on a my fixed day two on an airsoft gun so that's my flex no one wants that high higher optic moving down i believe that's an olight i hate it now the funny thing about olight is i believe for their performance isn't bad they're just likely to explode in your face somehow the flashlight exploded in his mouth the lithium ion batteries busted open pieces of the device were everywhere all right y'all right here we have an olight on the g45 we're gonna see if it really blows up like people say Going to your magwell, it looks like we have a magwell flare, and then we have a P mag. All right, here's my here's my criticism. I'm all good with like modern optics on the retro look. I get it. You know, the Aimplane Pro, or if you had to use something even more modern, I get that you may not have access to a good Surefire flashlight to fit the vibe of the Blood Diamond Car 15. I get that. Okay, I have a real Surefire 660 on mine. Yes, I'm trying to flex on you just a little bit, but I understand if it may be a concern where I cannot get my mind around is why you would throw the more modern magwell flares in a actual mag pull on a mag here's the thing okay it doesn't fit the vibe okay if you're going for that vibe it's too mod it's just right on the cusp of too modern i don't dig it you gotta do yourself the ranger pool tab style 550 cord with some 100 mile per hour tape it's a vibe and it's cheap it's cheaper than their freaking mag pulls <laughs> come on dude roast it it's kind of mean you know what sacrificial lamb the bear softers from the czech republic it looks like this is what i'm talking about okay yet again we start off with ukrainian fighter now we get to airsoft russian larpers the duality of man knows no limit so the russian kit looks great here's the thing you got a cool looking setup nice big old rpk mag with the red tape you got the ratnik look i think it's the name of the kit i always mess up the russian kit oh no russian larpers don't hurt me the kit looks good here's the thing i love a good op 4 kit right and i love playing as a good op 4 
I haven't been always perfect at it. If I ever go to like the Millsome West airsoft the things, I'm usually like a, a like a militia guy or I'm rolling around trying to look as op 4 -y as I can because it adds so much to the gameplay. When your LARP looks great, it's just undeniable, man. It is becoming undeniable. That's what y'all want. Moving on. Looks like we made it through the thicket of airsofters to get to some guys that actually are holding some real guns. We have Z Portray. Z Port Port Ray. So, breaking it down. We got some Marines doing Marine things. Being y up. He got me. He got me. Two for flinching. All right, we got some grip pods on some M4s of an ACOG. Ooh, they got like the tubes. Oh, they got some first spear looking tubes on their kit, which is pretty nice. We got some helmet scrim on one of our guys. Helmet scrim goes hard. It looks good. Your guys' kit looks very practical, very good setup. I love that for the most part, it seems like Marines are talking to a lot of infantry guys in the military. They're not big on running handguns a lot. They're big on having more rifle mags, and this is no exception. And then we can see some frag pouches on them. So there's nothing more scary and a thought that, that keeps me up at night than if I was to have to fight a bunch of caffeinated, nicotined out of their mind, 18 to 20 year old alcoholics armed to the teeth with explosives and automatic rifles. And that's essentially what the Marine Corps is. So big ups to my Marines. You guys' kit looks pretty good. All right, next up, we're back to the Airsoft crowd. We have the Wolf Claw Airsoft. Kit looks good. Multicam Black is a vibe. I'm gonna haze you for your optic choice because it's Airsoft, nothing you can do there. I'm sorry, man. But uh, the lens protector, I get it, lens protector. You wanna throw a lens protector on your gun. I'm gonna call you a nerd for it, all right? Embrace it, let your, let your optic break, be a man. <laughs> Who comes up with this stuff? Plate carrier looks like a generic plate carrier. Uh, my biggest critique is your holster, your drop leg holster. I have a feeling that that thing is not comfortable, okay? My intuition says that they went the way of the dodo for a reason. So if you see this and you want to comment and say, no, I actually like my holster, please do. But I'm going to guess because I, I think... Due to technical difficulties, we had to take a quick break due to the mics dying. I just cut out with no audio for a second, but we are so back, baby. Moving on, Colby 7575. <laughs> Colby, your face, dude. Your Hello. face in this photo is cracking me up. You look like you've seen heinous things. You look like you've seen a, a terrible battle. The AK looks like a solid practical setup. You got the donkey dong on the grip with an EOTech setup. Nice wood furniture. Don't know if you have a light on there or not. I don't see uh, any night vision attached to your helmet, but I do see a, a mount, a rhino mount for it. But what's most alarming is your choice in drink. Uh, you know what? I'm not much of a Modelo guy, but it's better than Bud Light, so I respect that. So, uh, you know what? I like that you dug a trench. I think it is practical. I think it will help keep you protected from artillery, which is a good thing. So I respect it. I can see some more kit in the background. Looks like you got your pack up there and stuff. So you look like you're well prepared. I want you on my team. Moving on. We have Speedy McGee in the Airsoft Barracks. Speedy McGee, the kit looks pretty good. Looks like you got an HSP setup with the uh, triple nipple up front. I like that setup, actually. I have one myself with a tactical looking phone case. Rocking what looks like a SIG MCX. Got a nice little EOTech and, uh, what is it freaking called? A nice EOTech PEC setup. It looks good. It looks like a nice high speed setup. Got some nods on. Which one is that? Oh, is that a... Oh, uh, that looks like a 14. You got your nods on, nice adapter to go on with that Wilcox bridge. It looks like a good setup, and you have a solid holster, and overall, it is a very classical, tried and true, high-speed gun guy setup. Plate care, battle belt, helmet with comms, and night vision. You have everything you need, nothing you don't, minus a grenade launcher. I want you on my team. I like that very much. Moving on, we have Tac Frog YT from Lithuania? Question mark. All right, Russian kit goes hard. What I like about your kit, what I think is funny, is on your kit, it says Russia. Then down low on your um, groin protector, you have a medic patch that is in uh, English. The duality of LARP. I respect it. I get it. It looks like you got a good setup going. I like that. It's very practical. Nothing to complain about. Helmet looks a little dated. I don't know how you're going to mount nods to it unless I'm missing something. Night vision's important. I think that'd be a good upcoming video to go over too. It's like you're on the steps of Eurasia. Yeah, stay safe. We're going to do the last one. This one is, I think, the banger of all of the kits. I love it the most. It is a true retro kit. This one comes from Fallout Prop Guy 11, and there's a lot, there's a lot to break down in this kit. <laughs> I remember seeing it, and I was dying laughing, because not only do I do I love the kit, but I recognize one of the ladies in there, Jackie. If you don't know who Jackie is, Jackie is part of admin lore. She goes back, she played an excellent actress of a Russian cam girl that I rated for a, the KP9 episode. <laughs> You are 
fucking simp. So Jackie, good to see you pop in. It's like a three for one. And then we have, I guess, Jackie's friend who's playing uh, what looks like an, <laughs> an SS girl. And she's got her potato masher grenade with some P-Dot camo. But the star of the show, Mr. Fallout prop guy with his brown best, his revolutionary kit, He's got the pouches, he's got the backup pistol, it looks like. Maybe a bayonet or a knife of some kind. Oh wait, looks like he's got two backup pistols in his waistline. It's hard to describe what is the peak of man. That is the peak of man. It's not a high-speed tech, the cool guy kit. It's not the craziest kit of them all, but it looks freaking awesome, and I love it. You, sir, I think you won this episode. What do you win? A hug and a kiss. Maybe I'll find you and send you a mixed bag of ammo or something. But I think we went on enough for this episode. Today was uh, is more positive than last time. I had to refrain from calling everyone fat. Bunch of fat motherfuckers. But overall, it was pretty fun, guys. Thanks for submitting. I love doing this episode. I think it's really fun to film, and I love seeing what you guys are rocking. And you might be wondering, hey, was Admin too mean? Was Admin too mean about my kit? I th well, to be fair, I feel like I was a lot nicer on this one. I'll be meaner next time. But just know that you guys are, you know, you're my boys. If anyone's gonna make fun of you guys, it's gonna be me. It's kind of like when your older brother will pick on you, but if someone else picks on you, your older brother will kick that guy's ass. And that's exactly what we do here at Administrator Results. Gentlemen, if you enjoyed this episode, feel free to like and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Your comments are a sacrifice to the algorithm gods, gods of which you enjoy roasting our kits together. As always, gentlemen, stay easy, stay breezy. I'll catch you guys on the flip. You are fucking simp.